So yeah, this this paper very much builds on all the papers that have come before it. Um, what uh, we're going to present today is a little bit about how we are taking the data and the knowledge and the expertise that exists within the consortium uh, to inform the development of participatory planning processes to include displaced people um, in the project cities. Uh, so I'm going to very just provide a very brief overview of the kind of rationale and, and what we've been, what we like, how we've got to this approach. And then I'm going to hand over to Jacqueline and to Nassim to talk a little bit about participatory forums that have already been established in uh, Nairobi and also in Jalalabad. So before going into this, I think it's worth uh, just sort of pointing out that this approach very much builds on um, a form of decentralized uh, planning that's been promoted by uh, federations of the urban poor or embedded in decentralized planning processes in cities all over the world that has sought to include um, the urban poor and marginalized communities. Um, but this is this is specifically to have more of a focus on how you can include uh, displaced people in those sorts of processes. So um, yeah, are the, the focus, the objective of this of this strand of work is to create spaces that can co-produce inclusive planning solutions. So the, the, sort of the, the objective is twofold. One is to build capacity amongst municipal actors, that's local government and other humanitarian actors, civil society organizations who are operating at the city level to communicate and develop innovative, inclusive solutions to protracted displacement. But there's also an additional objective, which is how we can draw from those processes, broader lessons that are relevant to uh, the cities and also global uh, policy actors and practice. Um, the forums themselves, um, what, so basically what we're, what we're trying to do in each city is to establish a participatory forum that can foster urban responses to displacement based on participatory planning processes. And so initially, these participatory forums are focused on identifying the barriers and opportunities for different municipal actors, recognising that these exist in very different political contexts to facilitate access to basic services and social protection, but they're also designed to facilitate collaboration between diverse actors that might not all be collaborating with each other to begin with. Um, and that specifically includes including this is, that specifically includes um, displaced communities and low, um, low income communities with the broader objective of fostering self-reliance and supporting the realization of, of rights. Um, the specific kind of objectives that you'll see in the, and these will come through in the presentations uh, in, in Nassim and Jacqueline's presentations is to uh, provide a space. So specifically to create a space where a, a range of local actors can come together to discuss and engage on issues that are affecting local displaced people and host populations and to then generate solutions to protracted displacement in the city. Um, Secondly, it's to draw on the lessons, the evidence, and the expertise that exists within the broader consortium that have already been presented, some of which has already been presented to you today, to shape policy and practice locally. But thirdly, recognizing the expertise that exists within the group and also within the participatory forums to provide technical guidance and support for municipal governments who are hosting large numbers of displaced people. And that will become apparent, I think, very quite clearly in the presentation from Jacqueline next. So I'm just going to hand over to Jacqueline. strategy for um, oh, Jackie, 2021. You're very quiet. Can you speak closer to your mic? Uh, can you hear me now? Sorry. Uh, not brilliantly. Hello? What did... Hello? Yes, that's better. Yep. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, first local strategy um, for Nairobi um, has been to start by seeking local knowledge and diversity from our forum stakeholders. So usually stakeholders in Nairobi that assist refugees are categorized under uh, various support services they provide, such as um, legal livelihoods, health, um, education, protection, and um, religious service, uh, services. And so from the government perspective, um, government provides services at no national, county, and judiciary uh, levels. So in addition, we also set up fo focus group discussions with host communities and urban displaced people living in Isli neighborhood and Madar Islam in Nairobi. So all our stakeholders uh, total to about 20. 
So the process of seeking knowledge uh, as a first step has been to engage stakeholders individually in one-on-one -on -one interviews spread across uh, about two months. So we termed this as the preparatory mobilization phase for the participatory forum. Um, as a second step to this, uh, we um, setting up a right shop to document policy asks by different uh, local practitioners within the forum and to also package th this into a policy brief. And thirdly, to continue depending our engagement with stakeholders, meaning that then invitations or at least communication is two way, not just us inviting them to the forum, but we also take part in some of the activities like meetings and workshop, workshops and linking key players at policy level. For instance, national government, municipal government and the UNHCR towards achieving some of the project's um, goals. So some of our key intended outcomes from um, this uh, phase, uh, one is to gain deeper insight on partners' work, for instance, um, impact and the challenges they face, some of which will not usually be discussed at a participatory forum level due to the time limitations, because sometimes we'll have a meeting going for, say, two hours, three hours, uh, and we have 20 stakeholders within that uh, forum. So, for example, we found out from our one-on-one -on -one interviews recently um, uh, from one of our stakeholders, that is Uma Safe House, that is based in Eastleigh. It's a community-based organization that provides protection services to uh, legitimate um, asylum seekers and refugees. But funny enough, human traffickers also um, access or at least um, um, wish to hide people behind the guise of seeking legitimate pr protection. So in this instance, therefore, uh, the CBO is faced with security, ethical, and legal, legal challenges in choosing when, uh, when and who to offer assistance to. And obviously, this kind of, inform of information will not necessarily come out during a forum. And so that's why it's important for us to have these one-on-one -on -one interviews with all the stakeholders. So secondly, one one of another intended outcome is to bridge practice and policy through the right shop and so therefore we hope to finalize on the policy brief document and thirdly to stay up to date with urban displacement at local and national levels so at national level we have been invited to join the urban refugee protection network that's the urpn which is, which usually brings together key stakeholders uh, on a periodic basis usually on a monthly basis to discuss urban displacement matters. So the discussions are structured around various themes, similar to the support services provided, that is health, education, protection, um, and so on. And lastly, one of our intended outcomes as well is to continue building and maintaining partner relationships within the uh, PDUW research working group for easier engagement at the participatory forum, which, which is really held every six months. Um, next slide, please. Anna? Anna? Yeah, it's not my. She's it's just a bit <laughs> slow. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. Sorry. Okay, um, as part of our second strategy, uh, local strategy for Nairobi, uh, we aim to reverse learn and shape outcomes. So through our stakeholder interviews that we've already conducted with government, we have learned that in spite of the encampment policy in Kenya, national government through RAS, that is the Refugee Affairs Secretariat, has been supporting urban refugees that are reasonably self-reliant um, through productive livelihoods. So RAS uh, invited us to two learning exchanges um, as a benchmarking exercise to document to, for us to document um, urban practices on self-reliance of refugees living in different country, country, counties, sorry, other than in Nairobi, that is in Kiambu County and Mombasa County. And to also further understand how urban integration of refugees can be achieved without much support, hopefully in the long term, from donor funding or humanitarian funding and government. So this is essentially geared towards uh, aiding us in the research to better understand the potential for refugees to achieve well-being and decent livelihoods in our Nairobi study areas, obviously, and um, uh, Madar Islam from the lessons learned from the learning exchanges. 
but most uh, strategically, the invitation for to attend the learning exchanges uh, by government uh, was to help us form a basis of developing research or a project, hopefully in future, around urban integration of refugees with the government support and other key stakeholders, um, including funders. So this is targeted at other urban hosting locations in Kenya, uh, specifically Nakuru City, an Eldoret town that they have identified and that currently hosts refugees. Uh, from the perspective that Nairobi is already too congested. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so finally, um, in line with our local strategy is to set up the participatory forum. So as a platform uh, whereby we will listen through the active participation of stakeholders by presenting findings from all our 2021 activities. So firstly, uh, we'll have a stakeholders validation. So essentially this is getting feedback from stakeholders on the joint policy brief document um, developed from the individual interviews and the right shop. That is from my initial phase and to be presented to stakeholders later on, hopefully in 2022 at a policy level, including the Nairobi municipal government. Um, a second uh, um, activity from this is to present findings from, our, uh, from other PDUW project work packages one and two, ensuring that the research process and the emerging findings remain relevant to our local stakeholders. And finally, we, we will set expected goals for 2022 uh, in the same forum as a continuation of activities in 2021. Thanks. Over to you, Nasim. Thank you so much. Um, so let me take you travel with you to Afghanistan. So this was the second location where we held a participatory forum. This was done this year in February. So we went to Jalalabad, which is near the border with Pakistan in the east, eastern part of Afghanistan. And it's basically home to both refugee returnees from Pakistan and internally displaced people from 17 out of the 34 provinces of the country. So it's not just an Eastern phenomenon. Jalalabad is really home to over half of the country's um, IDP population and 72% of the country's refugee returnee population. So this is why we chose Jalalabad to focus on. So we brought together, um, again, this approach of having a multi-leveled municipal dialogue we brought together people who don't usually get to sit together in a room and it's not definitely not the way of working of officials then and neither is it of, uh, of the ad hoc government now. Um, so the governor's office was represented, the municipality was there, all the representatives from local governance uh, agencies, the director of women's affairs, refugees and repatriation. So there was a big significant amount of government representation showing again how important this conversation is but also human rights offices, civil society organizations, university representative. The media was even there uh, filming the arrival of all of these people. So again, showing how much the conversation matters. And most importantly, we had representatives from IDP and returnee communities, from elders and women alike. So it was quite unusual, quite uncomfortable at the beginning to get the conversation started because the officials wanted to speak and leave but they, had, they were told they had to stay. And there were several points of tension already there. Again, you know what happened in August in the country many months before these tensions between governments um, and different populations were there. And one of the points of tension here that was discussed was the lack of consultation of people in policy development processes. And specifically here, the development of a national IDP policy in 2012 um, and its implementation since there were all question marks for people. So the discussions IDPs themselves wanted to have on that day was how come the policy hasn't reach, reached us? How come you've made these plans? We weren't consulted and now you want to leave the conversation. What is it that the state is ready to do for us today? And uh, so these are, it was a, a very strong uh, confrontation but that led to a dialogue as you will see in a second. So on the next slide, was what ensued was an honest conversation by government representatives of the fact that any discussion of protracted displacement, which is again in the title of our project, has to be paired with discussions of ongoing and newer displacement trends. 
So again, we can't just dissociate protracted uh, refugees in other contexts, and in this case of protracted returnees and IDPs from the continued layers of displacement that happen in the many countries that we study. And so this is something we're gonna have to decompose to help these municipal actors, is how do you cope with layers upon layers of displacement and pressure on the government? Um, the government also raised tensions around their understanding of the triple nexus and all of these concepts that are key to global commitments and to global conversations. Um, so questioning how to plan humanitarian development and peace building approaches in a context of insecurity, but also in a context where there's not enough capacity or sufficient resources for governments to support those in need. Um, one of the principles of our participatory fora is to say, you know, what, what support do municipal actors need to engage in urban responses or urban policy responses um, in terms of service delivery and others. And so when we asked that question, you know, there was a long list of what these municipal actors needed in terms of processes. Many, many from Kenya to Afghanistan, Many of these processes have been written out from education policies to basic health service provision. But in terms of implementation, that is where um, the government very clearly said they need the uh, international community, UN NGOs and others to make it happen. And that support really, you know, how we envisage municipal action has to include these actors. And finally, going to the next slide, when we asked what support against city actors needed, they concluded on the need to support urban planning, as many of the places where the displaced live are informal settlements, often areas that IDPs or refugee returnees started from scratch themselves, showing again how resilient and, and how much agency they have uh, really creating new com communities where they didn't exist. But there are also many land allocation sites, so many of these sorts of camps that were created in, in countries like Afghanistan to house refugee returnees and IDPs, and yet then they're in no way integrated in any city plan or service planning system. So the government then was planning to set up a Jalalabad city plan. And, you know, and they were open to be guided on how to avoid forced evictions, how to plan for resettlement. But very much, this was still very much the start of that conversation. And obstacles to that conversations were um, processes such as how to register IDPs, how to register work certificates and business licenses. So how to make the process planned and fair. These were the very real challenges that urban actors uh, were confronted with. Uh, and in a way, camps provide a more convenient way to identify, register and track the displaced. And for governments and for municipal actors, it's much harder in those settings to do that. And so that's what they needed assistance with. Um, and in response, the displaced for many prefer to remain invisible and hidden. So one of the key questions for us will be, how do you reconcile the fact that the displaced want to remain hidden while urban actors want to be able to register them, identify them, to give them access to rights? But there's obviously a huge issue around trust there. And then just to conclude, um, local government and municipal actors felt that too much focus had gone into the national level peace talks um, and national level plans, which we all know by now have failed, uh, instead of focusing on local planning, all of which reiterates really the need to have these participatory for and these conversations continue, despite the changes we know since. Thank you. <laughs>